Yeah, it's your boy Crypto Bloodbath, and welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. It is October 11th, 2018. Let me give a shout out to my man Quincy Alonzo. He wanted me to play some Anderson Pack. Well, one of my favorite AP songs is that bubbling. So we're gonna rock out to that for today. Thanks again for that song request. Quincy, what's good, people? I know I'm not even gonna ask if you're doing well today. I know you're not. <laughs> I know. Things are not looking great right now. Shout out to my EOS Detroit chat room and Telegram. I'm in there right now. Shout out to those people, good people over there. Today, yes, we're going to talk about this blood bath, this crypto blood bath that I did not start. Please do not blame me. <laughs> but we're going to look at that. And, you know, I also saw an article talking about that this was caused by Binance and them delisting a few altcoins. And let me tell you, that is definitely not why we have this wide scale sell off. It has nothing to do with that. So don't for once believe that's the case. You know, people like to pin any and everything to a sell off. They'll just go through the list and find a reason. That's that whole causation correlation fallacy that many people um, fall victim to. So uh, I definitely don't think that's the case. Uh, as, as to why we are seeing this sell off. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And then also we have an article about Harvard, Stanford and MIT having all invested in cryptocurrency funds. So we're going to take a look at that. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on just seeing all of these invest, like large institutional entities beginning to, to invest in cryptocurrencies. And what does that mean for the price of Bitcoin and, and all of the altcoins? You might be surprised because I'm going to explain why I think it has less of an impact on price as you may have thought. Um, but first, we're going to take a look at that market cap. We're currently at $205 billion. Bitcoin's dominance is up just a tad bit, 53.4%. And yeah, just all around bloodbath for sure. Bitcoin down 4.15% in the last 24 hours. Ethereum down even larger at 8.8%. I actually saw last night that uh, Ethereum, I saw Ethereum touch 198. I don't know, with my very own eyes, I don't know what the low was, but yeah, it got real ugly. XRP down 20% in the last seven days. Hope some of you guys took profits on that rise up. Bitcoin Cash down hard 12%. Yeah, overall pretty red day. Not looking good, people. Not looking good at all. And as you can see from the chart here, we tried to go through that trend line and the bulls kind of brought us back and we bounced off of that area a few times before actually going ahead and plummeting through and now at this point you know if you take a look at where we broke through it was around 6500 and our lows were, were all the way down to 6000 and this is on bid stamps um, exchange but man an almost 10 percent swing there about nine percent swing there in bitcoin which is huge for bitcoin to have um, don't think that this is over in my opinion I think we may see a dead cat bounce upwards and then we'll continue on down to test this 5900 again not looking good as far as making new highs at all we've definitely been dealt a setback in in price momentum to the upside and honestly it's just not looking good if I kind of zoom out and look at this we're still in somewhat well we were in a upward p uh, pattern there but we clearly broke that and broke that violently. Not looking good here, people. So um, I'll just keep an eye on that and keep you guys updated. I'm actually short, um, short on this position earlier. I actually tweeted out to Andy Keen on Twitter about that. He said he almost went long on a leverage trade and he decided not to. And he was all excited about that. Yeah, that's good you didn't, bro. You would have really been messed up there. But I went short, and I'm still in the position at this point. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. I was short maybe three, four hours prior to the big move, though. So um, the first article is out of News BTC. It says here, Crypto Bears dump $15 billion as markets plunge again. Markets are bleeding again. XRP, Bitcoin Cash, and Tron dropping double digits a movement in the markets 
has been long overdue and it came today as the crypto bears dumped 15 billion dollars and cryptocurrency markets have plummeted over the past couple of hours to drop precipitously close to 200 billion dollars and their yearly lows bitcoin played the pied piper leading the drop when it fell through the key support at 6550 an hour or so ago they're saying this was at the time of the writing of this article bigger dump came from ethereum which has lost nine percent dropping to levels back to 205 and again i told you guys i saw 198 on the dashboard so eh, not looking good there people like the digital leanings that they are the altcoins predictably followed suit and the top 20 is a sea of red right now in the top 10 xrp is the biggest loser with a fall of over 11 percent to just about 42 cent bitcoin cash is a close second also dropping 10 percent to trade at 460 bucks the rest have lost between seven and nine percent in this last route further down the chart is a bloodbath tron nim v chain are all dropping 10 to 11 percent right now the rest are all in bad shape as iota neo and tezos are all falling seven to nine percent there is only one altcoin to find the drop at the moment and that was eternity which has made eight percent on the day to trade at 118 bucks the launch of a recent windows mining bounty could be keeping ae afloat while all those around it are sinking the biggest losers in the top 100 at the moment are dentacoin noah coin and moac and Walton chain all dumping 13 to 16 percent so as you can see here total market capitalization just dropped hard total market capitalization has declined 6.8 percent over the past 24 hours as they fell back to 204 billion dollars in the past couple of hours one big plunge saw 15 billion eliminated from the crypto market as the bears pounded them again it has been the largest daily dump for over three weeks signaling that the route is not over Bitcoin dominance has crept back up to 53.5% as the altcoins bleed out again. Ah, so what do you guys feel about this? Are your hopes crushed again? I told you guys, man, I'm going to find the video and link it. I said almost, it had to be like in March, guys. I was saying that, that the, the year was just starting off and felt like 2014 where we would just not make any new um new gains no no new highs you know and so i think we can just pretty much at this point we're in middle of october pretty much november is around the corner this year is pretty much over i'm just going to be honest with you and i didn't get a lot of people to watch this tax um interview i did with uh, andrew karnowski but you should watch that video because we talk about and he you know he made me think about what could happen at the end of this year meaning i see sell-offs coming at the end of this year because people are going to want to lock in those losses so that they can carry those over into uh the next year for deductions so you know hey we may see depending on where we are maybe we get um higher from here but then we get slammed back down by december end of the year um but hey we'll see again i'm just giving you the real not what you want to hear let me know your thoughts about this article and this bloodbath we're having did you think we were going to see that or did you think we were going to head higher and make uh, a run for 7200 we didn't do that people we did not do that the next article out of ccn says here breaking harvard stanford and mit have all invested in cryptocurrency funds at least five more university endowments have invested in cryptocurrency funds suggesting that the herd of institutional investors is finally beginning to place at least small bets on the nascent asset class as reported by the information a cadre of major educational institutions including harvard university stanford university mit 
Dartmouth College and the University of North Carolina have each invested in at least one cryptocurrency fund through their respective endowments, citing an unnamed source familiar with the investment. The publication reported that these five university endowments have invested tens of millions of dollars in these funds, which in turn invest in both physical currency, cryptocurrencies and equity in cryptocurrency companies. CCM previously reported that Yale University, which controls the second largest university endowment next to Harvard, had allocated a portion of its $29.4 billion in assets into two cryptocurrency funds operated by Andreessen Horowitz, that's the A16Z, and Paradigm. Even with these investments, the six universities that are now said to have invested in crypto funds still have very little exposure to this asset class. Nevertheless, the fact that they are engaging with the market at all could help legitimize the space. As the information journalist John Victor explained, a move by endowments into funds that will directly bet on cryptocurrency signals a major shift in investment sentiment toward the asset class. In the same way, the institutions over the past decade became more willing to invest in private tech companies, backing from such closely watched institutions could help validate cryptocurrency which are still considered too risky by many institutional investors. Cryptocurrency investors and analysts such as Mike Novogratz had long predicted that a herd of institutional investors would power the next Bitcoin bull market. Ari Paul, a cryptocurrency fund manager and former portfolio manager at the University of Chicago's endowment, said in April that he believed that a number of institutions were inter interested in investing that he believed that a number of institutions were in, in said in April that he believed that a number of institutions were interested in investing in cryptocurrencies but were waiting for major names such as Yale to make the first move so that they would have a, an excuse to do so themselves notably though institutional investors are generally viewed as having a more sober view on cryptocurrency assets than retail investors a recent survey by Wall Street strategy a recent survey by Wall Street strategy firm Fundstrap found that institutions that have already invested in cryptocurrencies are actually more optimistic about Bitcoin's near-term prospects than retail investors. So that's interesting to know. Um, and you know, as I stated at the beginning of this video, um, wait, wait, break, breaking news. It, it looks like we have. Um, Harvard, Stanford, and MIT have all now divested from their cryptocurrency funds. <laughs> Again, they've divested from their cryptocurrency funds. This bloodbath has caused them to lose their nuts. <laughs> Yo, so look, I think that you're seeing this. These, first of all, the the money that's coming in from these institutions are not big enough to really sway the markets that much. And on top of that, I would assume that they are doing OTC uh, transactions. So you won't see a direct impact from these large buys of cryptocurrencies. So what I mean by that is if I hold a large sum of crypto, uh, just, let's just say Bitcoin, and an endowment or a broker comes to me normally and they say, hey, I have a university like Yale that's interested in buying $20 million worth of Bitcoin. Well, I'm gonna take that 20 million, right? Sell it to them. They're gonna, in return, give me fiat. They're not gonna sell that, the cryptocurrency that they just bought. That's gonna be held up, pent up demand. And I've received my fiat for the Bitcoin. So there's a net net, no reaction, no price movement in the markets. So you guys, you, we may have to reconsider how we're looking at institutional funds come into this space uh, until those dark pools of Bitcoin uh, are all sold up and then individuals have to, or institutions have to go into the open market to actually purchase. We may not see a noticeable move in any of these cryptos uh, from these big institutions coming in. So just keep that in mind and you guys let me know what do you think about Harvard, Stanford, and MIT hitting the cryptocurrency scene. I think that's cool. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with that. Though I personally don't care if they come in or not. Um, I'm more about 
keeping it independent from the current banking system. So when that crashes, you know, we should see some type of uh, inverse correlation, hopefully at some point to the crumbling banking system and fiat structure. I don't think fiat is going away, but I think um, cryptocurrencies will have a, a huge rise against fiat currencies uh, globally. You'll benefit greatly if you are in this space, uh, especially much more than precious metals. So you guys, again, let me know your thoughts. Make sure you like and subscribe. And oh, don't forget, if you guys, not too many days left, October 31st, I'll be out in Vegas at the Aria Hotel celebrating Bitcoin 10 years. Yes, come hang with me, World CryptoCon. If you want to register and uh, receive 20% off, you buy you a shirt or a hoodie, and I'll send you that promo code. Or you can just register right from my site, CryptoBlood.io, and I'll see you guys out there. That's pretty much it for today. That's my two Satoshis. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, like I said, and also click that bell and share this video. It's your boy, Crypto Blood. I'm out. Holla.